Yo, Elliot, I can feel myself on the path to building a solid structure in my life by just being and getting the work done in front of me. That's so key, bro. Where I'm having an issue is I'm still relatively new on this path. And from that, my mind is playing tricks on me. For example, since staying away from entertainment influences such as Netflix, Netflix, video games, etc., I find that random pieces of media are popping up in my head. Pieces I don't associate with often. Annie's Tomorrow, Darth Vader theme, YMCA theme, and the list goes on. I feel these arguably demonic influences are trying to take hold of me whenever I'm committed to something that's not sugary. More less than a question, I'm asking for suggestions on how to stay grounded and committed when working on my non-job and fitness. Focus has always been a big issue for me and in 2022, that's the number one thing I want to remedy as I know all the pieces will come together once I have, once I'm able to take control of that. Any thoughts are highly appreciated. So the very first thing I want to do is acknowledge you. That's great that you're cutting out useless entertainments, right? Brain candy. And I think that's why you call it sugary, right? It's just, it's rots the brain like candy rots your teeth, right? Right. Candy tastes good, right? It gives you a little bit of a high, right? But ultimately, it destroys your body. It rots your teeth, right? And it's the same thing with most of the entertainment that people engage in. I don't get it, but then again, I'm a little weird, right? So people are watching all this, like, just mindless, mind-numbing, brain candy entertainment. And it's like, you're not receiving anything from that, right? Why are you doing that? It's just, it's just destroying you. So I want to acknowledge you for recognizing that. Like most people, they can't even see it, right? You tell them you're going to take away their Netflix. It's like a crack, crackhead. Like, no, don't take it away from me, right? You take away their entertainment. It's like taking away, uh, taking away crack from a crack addict. It's, it's the strangest thing, especially grown men. Grown men. Anyway, you're on your path and you're, and you're removing it from your life. That's a good, that's a good thing, but you're struggling now because the old images that are still imprinted on your mind are coming up, right? They even say, I've heard, the, I've heard someone say this once before, that once you look at porn, I know we're not talking about porn, but I just want to demonstrate how images imprint themselves on our souls. And that's why it's so important to be very discerning about what it is that you're going to ingest. They say the, the first time you watch porn, you're destroyed forever. You can't undo it, right? Just like they say, once you see something, you can't unsee it, right? And it begin, and those images start to literally rewire your brain. They rewire your mind. I've been listening to a conference on spiritual warfare by Chad Ripperger. And uh, it's, it's amazing. It's really good. I, sh I, I shared it with you guys in, in the uh, Discord group. And one of the speakers said something so amazing. He said that... Uh, Demons cannot influence your imagination, but they will use the pictures that are already imprinted on your imaginations to influence you. So in other words, a demon can't give you bad thoughts, but they can help you remember bad thoughts, and then they can start to really uh, enhance and, and embellish upon and put fuel on the fire of a bad thought, right? But all those bad thoughts are, are imprinted on us through experiences, through images, through things that we listen to, right? So he was asserting, he said, put no evil images in your mind. You know how they say, see no evil, hear no evil, right? See no evil, hear no evil, because then evil can't manipulate you. So right now, you know, you're having like uh, theme songs and stuff in your head. It's not nearly as bad, but things like pornography or things like really violent, gruesome. Like, I don't understand people that watch like horror films, right? Like who watches that? Why, why do people watch horror films, right? Where like gore and ghoul and like people are, are like faces are blown up and blood and guts and like all kinds of weird stuff like that. You would think that, oh, I'm an adult. That's not going to, that's not going to affect me. Like little kids have, have uh, nightmares and stuff like that. 
this was one of his points, and I wanted to bring this up too because we talked about psychedelics last week. A lot of people who take psychedelics, they say, oh, I had this vision. I saw this thing, right? And according to the speaker in this summit, he was saying, you don't see anything. You didn't see anything. You remembered images and, they're, and they, re, they return in a distorted way because you're under the influence of a narcotic. You're under the influence of a drug. And when you do that, you open yourself up to demonic manipulation. And so what the demons will often do is they'll take the images that are already in your head. The images have to already be in your head and they'll start to mess with you. People will say stuff like, yeah, I saw like a, a robot elf, right? Machine elves. They'll say in my dreams or, you know, a talking alligator, right? I remember speaking with some guys at one of my grounding camps and he was like, it was a, it was a talking octopus, right? And this octopus was doing all these things. And he thought he was like being enlightened by this. I don't know. It was weird. He was explaining to me like, you know, the octopus was giving him insights. Well, the fact is that that was an image that was already placed on his, in his mind that now demons can go in and manipulate, right? They can go in and screw with you. So what you're experiencing right now, if you've cut yourself off from all of these images, right? All these movies and videos and garbage is the imprint is left in on you. This, my friends, is why it's so important that we have to be discerning about what we are watching, right? Entertainment is not just mindless, but it's mind destroying. It's soul destroying, right? There's a really good book that I often refer to uh, called Terror of Demons, Returning to Catholic Masculinity by Kennedy Hall. And I like Kennedy Hall. He's a young guy. He's you know, probably around my age, played football, and you know, he's, he's a cool dude. He, um, he, he was doing an interview, and so I caught the interview with him and some other guy, and uh, he, was talking about, he was talking about how pornography, he was talking about how pornography does this, and he doesn't even use the word pornography anymore, he says because it's too colloquial, he says that it's just too much of a bastardized term, he says evil images, evil images, he says don't even call it porn, he says call it evil images because they're images that are used in order to destroy you. I know we're not talking about porn, but here are some of the insights that he had about porn. He said, he, he rattled off all these different sins that were associated with porn that I never even thought of, two of which I was like, whoa. He said, one of them, first of all, a lot of the women that, are, that you're watching porn, uh, when you're watching pornography, a lot of these women are dead. And he said, a lot of them are dead. A lot of them, they were slaves. And at this point, you know, they may have been dead. And, you know, and of course, you never know who, when you're watching TV or whatever, if this person is alive or not. He says, so number one, it's necro. He says, it's like necrophilia. He's like, it's like you're, 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 you're having sex with a dead person in your mind. He's like, that alone is sickening to consider that you're beating off and you're getting off on the images of a dead person, right? And so that made me cringe. And then he said, it's, he said, pornography is homosexual. He says, if you're watching pornography, you're behaving like a homo because you're, you're, how did he say this? He said, essentially, you're, you being a man are being aroused by a man yourself by playing with yourself, right? So he was saying like masturbation is like homosexual, being homosexual. Anyway, it was pretty interesting. He was talking about how these evil images produce multiple sins, Right. So I know you're not you're not watching this stuff anymore. You just got to. Hey, look, you got to recognize that the imprint is still on you. And the best thing that you can do is to not engage. Just don't engage with it. Right. You hear it. Right. Or you see it or it's it's bubbling up in your consciousness. If you judge it, if you resist it, have you ever heard what you resist persist? If you resist it, now you have an emotional response to it and whenever something becomes emotional it digs itself into your body a thought is a thought thoughts are shallow thoughts are shallow emotions are deep just think about just think about boom 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 like as things move into your body right it goes from thought very surface thoughts are surface thoughts are they say thoughts are things thoughts are not things thoughts are not things until you have a feeling about it 
When you have a feeling about a thought, now it becomes a thing because that feeling literally are literally are like hormones and neurotransmitters and movement in the body. So the thought then becomes a thing when you feel something about it. And then when you do something about it, it really becomes physical. So it goes from thought to emotion to physics. If a thought comes to you that you don't want there, you just ignore it. You don't engage with it. You see this with with Eve in the garden too, right? They say Eve's first mistake when dealing with the serpent was that when the serpent came and said, hey Eve, she should have been like talking snake. Nope, right? Talking snake, right? God created a garden, but he didn't, he didn't say that the animals are gonna talk to you, right? He says you have dominion over all these animals. The minute Eve saw a talking snake, she should have been like, this is weird. I'm going that way, right? But instead, talking snake and she was like hey talking snake the minute she said hey talking snake all was lost it's the same thing with the thoughts in our heads a thought comes whether you like it whether you whether you hate it whatever it is the minute the thought comes and you entertain the thought now you're at its mercy but if a thought comes and you're just like there's a thought and you look away Think nothing of it, right? And the thought could be persistent. A thought could keep coming, right? The thought keeps coming, keeps coming. But if you just notice it without judging it, it eventually it'll be like, all right, this guy's not listening. Or, and it'll just go away. I will add to this also. Not only is it a good idea to remove evil imprint, evil images, right? In all regards, not just porn from your, from your consciousness, from your mind and from your thought. But it's really a good idea to imprint yourself with positive thoughts, right? And I'm not saying po like positive thoughts, like, oh, I love myself. I'm talking about like, I go to mass, whenever I go to mass and we, they do the, 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 the prayers, right? The songs, prayers, those prayers stick with me. I'm, in fact, my, I've been taking my kids. My kids were going to mass. My daughter, we took to mass on, you know, all of us, we went on Sunday. And, my, and I caught my daughter singing the songs, right? Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Right, because you know that's what you do when you're at mass sometimes. They pray that, they sing that. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. I know I sound terrible. But she was walking around the house going, just singing, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. So I knew, I was like, hey, she's got a solid imprint on her. That's a good imprint, right? As opposed to sometimes I literally hear them singing songs and lyrics that are disgusting. I'm like, whoa, what are you saying? Do you know what you're saying? I have to stop one of my kids sometimes. I'll say, oh, whoa. Do you hear what you're saying? Do you know what you're saying? And she'll giggle and stuff. I'm like, don't do you know that that is seizing your soul right now, right? And she understands. So, you know, they, they, they're very careful about what they say around me. But I know that they're on their screens and they're watching music videos or they're listening to, listening to rap music or whatever it is that they're into at the moment. Uh, and I just have to assert that not only is it good to get rid of that stuff, but to imprint your mind with good things. This is why, you know, in the Bible it says, pray without ceasing. Ever hear that? St. Paul says, pray without ceasing. And this is one of the things that Protestants get wrong. They say, oh, you shouldn't say the same prayer over and over and over again, right? Because they, they totally misunderstand the part of the, when Jesus says, you know, uh, uh, like the heathens do, you know, they, they do these repetitive prayers, but they're not, those, those are prayers that are designed to like, break down their so-called God in order to have that God give them something. But if you pray the Jesus prayer just over and over again, Lord Jesus Christ. In fact, I found myself doing it last night. When I can't go to sleep at night, you know what I do? I pray the Jesus prayer. In my, while I'm sleeping or while I'm just doing nothing, I'll just pray the Jesus prayer. Jesus prayer is a simple four-part prayer. And you could even do two parts. But this, I would brainwash myself with this. In fact, when I was really struggling, right? People say that when you that you can't get addicted to weed, marijuana, right? They're not. They're not. They're not true. That's not true. You can be, you can be physically and mentally and emotionally addicted to marijuana. Because I know I was. I know I was. Because when I wanted, when I tried to stop, it kept calling me back. And so I got to a point in my life where I knew it was time to stop. 
And what really helped me with the cravings and, and with, the, with the crazy thoughts and like the withdrawal symptoms was Jesus prayer. And I must have prayed this prayer a million times. Let me teach you this prayer. If you want to not only just get rid of negative or, or disgusting evil thoughts, but replace it with beauty, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. It's a four-part prayer. And if you really want to take it to the next level, because what did I say? A thought is surface. Emotion is body. The way you make that prayer emotional is by breathing it. So I will do this. I inhale on the Lord Jesus Christ. Exhale. Have mercy on me. Inhale. No, I'm sorry. It's Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God. Have mercy on me, a sinner. I must have did that a hundred times last night because I woke up in the middle of the night and I don't know why. I couldn't go back to sleep. So I was there going, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God. Have mercy on me, a sinner. If you ever catch yourself just like you can't sleep at night or you have like crazy thoughts, thoughts are just running through your mind, pray that prayer, brother, over and over again. And you could shorten it up too because sometimes I'll just go, Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on me. There is an amazing book all about this prayer that I think you guys would really like. Here it is. Two, two books. Mm -hmm. The Jesus Prayer. And it tells you the classic guide to practice the unceasing prayer as found in the way of the pilgrim. So this is, this is an old Russian tale, old Russian story about a, a young man who goes on a pilgrimage, right? He gives up his life and he wants to discover the mystical power of the Jesus prayer because he's heard that uh, it can transform you. Just that prayer alone can help you reach, uh, I think the Orthodox call it deification, right? Ortho Orthodox tradition is pretty cool, right? The Orthodox believe that your job is to become like Christ, to be deified, right? And so they have like prayers and meditations and ways of being that help you become deified, right? And so this book is all about how this young man uses, and he, you know, at some point he's praying it 30,000 times a day. I got to reread this one of these days. It's a beautiful, beautiful book. Beautiful book. I'm looking at like what all the things I highlighted. I could start reading from this here for you guys, but I won't. I'll let you read it. And then this book is a guide to the Jesus prayer. This is where I learned the fact that it becomes, it becomes physical when you breathe it. They call it the prayer of the heart because when you breathe it, it becomes a part of your body. You can allow that prayer to become a part of your body the same way that pornography or Darth Vader or whatever becomes a part of your body when you engage the thoughts that are associated with it. But that's pop culture garbage, pop culture, satanic trash. But this here, ancient mystical prayer, you can brainwash. That's basically what I said I did. I brainwashed myself with the Jesus prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on me. I would, propose, I would pose that as a challenge to all of you listening here, right? Use that as a way to undo and then undo the brainwashing of the world and then imprint a mystical prayer on your heart. Beautiful, beautiful stuff. So I know I'm talking a lot. I'm talking in circles. I'm talking about a lot of different things. Let me make sure I'm on the right track with you here. He says, more or less, my question I'm asking is suggestions on how I can stay grounded and committed when working on my non-job and fitness. That sounds like a totally different question. <laughs> totally different question. Focus is the number one thing. Well, I'll tell you what, your non-job and your fitness focus will be drawn into focus when you know how to focus your mind, right? It, the focus is the tool. 
The thing is what you're using for the tool, right? Like focus is the hammer, right? If you don't have a hammer, you can't nail anything. What are you gonna do? Use your hand? If you don't have a hammer, you can't nail anything in. So you could have the nail, right? And the nail, it would be like fitness, your business, your career, your wife, your children, your family, right? Those are all nails. But if you don't have a hammer, none of those nails are going to go anywhere. They're not going to do anything with them. Focus is the hammer. And by practicing the Jesus prayer, mystical prayer, meditation, right? That's all about the word meditation, I believe, or mantra means training of the mind. The Jesus prayer is in essence a mantra. It's basically a mantra. Even Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. I pray that 150 times a day, right? Oh, I, once, I don't have my rosary in my pocket. But I pray that 150 times a day, that becomes a, a training of the mind, right? Then not only do I pray that, but I meditate on the mysteries of Christ. So you got to train your mind, guys. You got to train your mind as a tool that you can then use to help you focus on other things, right? So rather than focusing on the nail, focus on the hammer. The hammer is training of the mind, mantra, prayer. Hope that helps, dude. Done. Yo, are you ready to become a king in your life? If so, I'm looking for a few more guys that I can work closely with in order to help them dominate in fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you, then just go over to my Instagram account and DM me the word king, K-I-N-G. My team will get back to you with the details. If you're able to message me today, I can guarantee you that you'll be able to work closely with me. So DM me the word king on my Instagram and I'll get back to you with the details right away.